This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Today we're going to be going through how to create stop motion animation in Blender. In previous tutorials, we went through how to create the materials, but today we'll be going through how to do the actual animation. There's a link in the description below to the previous tutorial, and I'll be including this bouncing ball animation for free if you want to append the materials, displacement modifiers, or see my keyframe setup. Just hit file append and choose the objects that you want to append. We covered this briefly in the shader tutorial, but I'll explain it here as well. If you open the shader panel, you can add keyframes to the mapping node here on a fingerprint texture. I like to go ahead every two frames and animate the rotation. You can add a few keyframes here. I find four is usually enough to make it not look too repetitive. Then if you go to the F curve editor, select the keyframes and press T, you can create a constant interpolation. Then on the tool panel, you can add an F curve modifier and set it to loop so that it stays looping throughout your entire animation. You can animate my hand to start and stop the texture animation when the character is moving, or you could use a driver to make the animation move. However, I feel like when everything is in motion, most people don't notice and it's not worth the time. I find it best to avoid adding animation to certain pieces of my character, otherwise things get a bit noisy visually. For example, small parts like the eyes. And of course, you don't want to add animation to things that wouldn't naturally be touched by the hands anyways, things like the ground or background objects. To create a boil on my character, which is that little wiggle clay gets as it's mushed around, I use a displacement modifier with a cloud texture. Once you've added that texture, you can animate the size here in the same way we did with the fingerprints to get a boil. I like to move the scale up and down on the cloud texture. If you use the vertex group option here, you can select where the displacement will apply. Again, I like to avoid adding it to smaller areas, such as the eyes or the mouse. I also like to keep my displacement number quite low, otherwise I find that things get a bit sporadic and it breaks my model. One thing to consider when trying to do a stop motion style is the frame rate. Traditionally, because it takes so long to animate these little characters, they animate at 12 frames a second to save time. Now animating at 12 frames a second will give you a more jittery look because there's less frames playing back. I choose to animate at 24 frames a second because I like the flexibility of switching between that jittery look and a smooth look when I want to create a smoother motion. So stop motion is more than a frame rate, it's more than just a boil, and it's more than just a texture. It's an actual type of animation. So how do you go about getting that type of animation look in 3D software? Well, there's two main approaches I find that are the best way to do it. One is called Animating 4. This is mimicking how stop motion animators actually animate. So they can't create a keyframe several photos down and expect the computer to translate from one photo to the next. They have to plan out their moves ahead and they animate forward photo by photo until they get to that next keyframe. You can do this in Blender quite simply. You just start from the beginning and you animate forward. Now what this will do is it'll introduce a little bit of wobble and a little bit of human error into the way your character moves. This is really a purest way to approach it, and I think it's a bit much. I don't think you get that much from it when there's much simpler ways to go about achieving that look. We are on a computer after all, and we can save time by using keyframes. So the way I like to do it is by creating keyframes and then going backwards. So let me show you how I do that. I'm gonna use this bouncing ball as an example. So what I do is I go ahead and I create my keyframes, and I get my animation set to how I want it with the keyframes that I have. After that, what I'll do is I'll open the F-curve editor, I'll select my keyframes, I'll press T, and then I'll select constant interpolation. And you can see here that it's removing the animation that the computer calculates between keyframes. So the only positions that are shown are the ones that I set with the keyframe. And I can see here that there's not enough animation to show that the ball is bouncing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that constant interpolation and I'm going to get my keyframe data back. Now what we're going to do is add in between keyframes. Now in between keyframes are any keyframes that appear in between your major keyframes. So you usually have your keyframes, which are your key poses, your most important poses, and your most important positions. And then you have your in between frames, which are the frames you put in between to make that motion look natural. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go backwards through my animation and I'm going to insert some keyframes at what I consider to be some important parts. After that, I'll go back, I'll rechange it back to constant interpolation, and once I've done that, I can play the animation back and see that it's looking a little bit better. Now at this point, I'll decide whether I need to insert more keyframes or not. There's really no correct amount of keyframes or correct way to approach how many keyframes you're going to do. Honestly, this is just what looks best to you and what you think sells the effect. Another important thing to consider when you're trying to create a stop motion look is the camera. So let's think about how they record on set. They have a tiny little model and then they have a long lens they have to use to point to that model from far away to get close up. And the result of this is a more shallow depth of field. So 
What we can do is we can model our scene physically accurate and Blender has a great camera to do so. And then when we do that, it'll do all the work for us and it'll create a shallow background just naturally based on the physics of the scene. I like to push the limits a bit further though. We're not necessarily going for realism here as much as we are going trying to capture the charm of stop motion. So oftentimes I'll come in here and I'll set the aperture to a really low number until I get something that I like stylistically, sometimes even as low as 0.5. Play with this on your own until you get something you feel comfortable with. Another key to selling the illusion of stop motion is your environment. Putting them in environments that look like they were handcrafted can really sell the effect. You can take this as extreme as you want. I usually find that using a plastic shader and keeping the colors vibrant is a simple way to maintain the illusion without too much extra effort. We can quickly convert that clay shader into a plastic material by reducing the normal bump to zero and playing with the roughness slider. This will give us a basic plastic-like shader to use in our scene. I also sometimes do this and add a noise node into the normal with very small detail to give a surface a tiny bit of a textured look. If you're looking to improve your skills as an artist, as an illustrator, or designer to create more charming scenes, I recommend checking out Skillshare's courses. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. I've been using it for two to three years and I love it. I've improved my characters, compositions, layouts through their many design and illustration resources. They also have a great selection of 3D classes, including some made by me. Skillshare is great for beginners, pros, dabblers, and masters. It's especially great for lifelong learners who love to explore. Street Photography Unlock the Secrets of Composition, Color, and Confidence is a great course to teach you some composition and color, both of which are skills that can greatly enhance your 3D renders. With such a large library and variety of topics, Skillshare is a really great way to expand your skill set to make you a better all-around 3D artist. Start learning for less than $10 a month. Click the link in the description to get two free months of premium membership and explore your creativity. That's all for today's tutorial. Make sure to tag me in your creations on Instagram. I love seeing what the talented people in this community make from these tutorials, and oftentimes I'll share them to my own page. Thank you for watching.